Hi everyone, Nadine Flynn here. I, today I wanted to show you how to use the graduated filter in Lightroom. So if you go up to the menu row here and click on the rectangular square, that is your graduated filter. Below that pops up a menu of things that you can adjust within the filter. So since I want to uh, darken the clouds in this image, I've already got, come into Lightroom and pulled my exposure down, highlights, whites. I'm also going to bring down the shadows and up the contrast a bit, increase clarity, and also a little bit of dehaze just to help with the um, contrast. So the way that the graduated filter works is any area beyond which you click your mouse, that area is the area that will have 100% of the effect. And then um, as you drag down, that uh, effect is diminished. So I'm going to start at the horizon line, click my mouse and hold it down as I drag down. You can see right away that the effect is in the clouds and uh, I'm going to have a nice margin here so that the effect is graduated really nicely. Now I'd like a little more drama in the clouds than that. So I'm going to pull my exposure down even more and actually the highlights down more because I really want the clouds to have drama and detail and just going to adjust that so that they really have a punch. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the mask overlay so you can see exactly where the effect is. And so it's on the sand area here, which I'm going to take that off in just a little bit. And I'm also going to remove it off of the C stack because I want the detail to remain in the C stack. So the way to do that is to come over to uh, the brush that is within the graduated filter area. Do not click on the brush above that, the brush tool. That's a completely different thing. Use the brush within the gradient. Click on that. And then you have a little menu that pops up below this menu that you had before. So you want to come over to the erase button. And I want the flow to be almost 100% because I want it totally off that rock. I am going to feather it at about 50 and we'll see how that uh, works with the uh, C-Stack. I'm going to turn the mask overlay back on so you can really see how it is erasing this effect from the C-Stack. Okay, now I have a nice margin on my brush here, but I want to make sure that I don't go outside the line of the C-Stack because then I will have a haloing effect and I really don't want that. You can go in and clean that up, magnify it and clean it up a little bit more if you want. I'm going to take it off this rock in the foreground or the one that's in front of the C-Stack as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and then I'm going to get a really small brush and try to take it off these rocks here. I don't want them to be too dark and uh, I sure don't want any clipping in my image. Okay, now I also want to um, lighten the sand a little bit as I said earlier. So if I were to change the flow or the effect of um, the brush here, it would change it on the areas that I've already worked. So simply I'm going to just click on a different brush. I'll go with the B brush, no particular reason, then click back on erase and then adjust that down because I want a little bit of effect on the sand but not a lot. Go back to a larger brush here and then just erase some of that off of the sand area here. And it's nice to keep the uh, mask overlay selected so that you can really see where you've already worked and what is um, being erased. Okay, I'm going to take the mask off now to see exactly what that's looking like. And I like that a lot better. 
You can see the texture in the sea stack again, yet the clouds are nice and dark. Now, if I decided that I wanted even more uh, drama in these clouds, I can go ahead and adjust my panel here and it won't affect the sea stack whatsoever. So if I pull exposure down, clouds are really a lot darker. It's not on the sea stack, but you can see the little halo effect. So I don't want to go that dark. So I'll bring it back up where I was before. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> so because I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the graduated filter again, and that will disengage it. Now there are other things I need to do to this image to clean it up a bit. There's a few spots here I need to remove and I probably take out some of the uh, footsteps in the sand here. Let me show you quickly how you can do a graduated filter that does not have a level um, guideline or line of demarcation, I guess it would be. So say example, for example, I wanted to brighten this area or darken it but I want to do the corner. I can decide on where I want that effect to start. Hold down my mouse, click and hold down, and then drag diagonally. And then that puts the effect right in the area of the graduated filter that I had selected on a diagonal. It doesn't have to be horiz straight horizontal or straight vertical. Now if I want to change this angle, I can hover over the middle line, the two little arrows show up, and I can adjust it, I can tilt it either way. If I decide that I don't want that much um, area to be gradually affected with this filter, I can hold one of the lines and pull down, that will narrow it, or I can hold on the other line and pull it up the other way. So if I want more area to be in that affected area, that would be a way to do that. I don't really want this uh, changed or darkened, so I'm going to step back. So that is the graduated filter. If you have any questions, uh, the very introductory um, tutorial on the graduated filter, any questions at all, please uh, contact me, email me, PM me, um, and I'm happy to help. Okay, thank you.